What is up, everybody? Jim to my right. Paul Neese, across from us today. Paul, you must be in between hunts or something like I, that. I am exactly in between hunts. You nailed it. We caught you. You did. It's you a, did. It's, it's like spotting a, oh, I don't know, like a Star Valley sneak or something in <laughs> the fall. I, when you honest, see Paul I, Neese. I, uh, honestly, I feel like people who search for those, are they say it's like spotting a niece. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Think about it that way. <laughs> Think about it in terms I'll of be, that. I'll be roaming the woods of North Idaho in two days, so getting Ooh. close. Ooh. Very nice. I was yeah, going to say, nice. I was gonna say I mean, we're, this is a 10-minute talk. We're burning up time, but we don't get the niece very often. So, Paul, where have you been? And then, and then you said where you're going, but where have you been? Where are you going? Well, I'm just back from a long run. I was out in Colorado and Nebraska, did a little bit of stuff with the local BHA out there. We did a, a Vortex Cabela's experience down in, in uh, central Colorado for antelope. And then they actually went over to southern Colorado helping some guys on a muzzleloader elk hunt the, out of Fort Carson there, no, no, the military guys out of Fort Carson. So had a great time, did a little calling for them, got a couple of bulls to come in, but Ooh. you know, be, uh, hunting being what it is, oh. no, no dead bulls were taken, but we did, we did manage a cow elk and a couple of deer. So, oh man, phenomenal. Good. it was fun. It was a great hunt. Yeah. 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 That's great. All Fantastic. Right. Now we got, unfortunately, cause I want to just talk hunting stories for the rest of the tank. We got to get to the task at hand, <laughs> which is rifle covers slash rifle scope covers we've got a couple i guess uh you know integral systems here one of which i'll i'll note so i'm going to say the ones that we have which uh, uh we've got the uh the stealthy hunter rifle rifle cover so that's uh ryan lampers uh he's doing this one uh it's really cool uh and then the one that we don't have here i'm going to describe it it's the solo hunter rifle cover so that's timbernet so another another guy that's doing a lot of hunt video type stuff like that and then we have the air armor uh, and this is more of a, a scope cover it, looks like it yeah mm-hmm. a lot of padding uh, on there a lot of padding uh very durable uh greg McHale, another tv guy this is this is kind of his one of choice we did uh we yeah. did like a sheep hunting kit podcast kind of like five essentials and this is one of his so we're going to kind of re i'm going to re go over what he uh, liked about uh, this one but uh, and then and then we have paul here tons of hunt experience doesn't use a rifle cover and i'm looking for you guys to sell me on a rifle cover i've had some experience i'll, I'll you know i'll give you some feedback on on what mine has been but yeah i'm not a am not a big user so i'm looking forward to hearing the pros of of running these things you did say though that there's kind of one situation where you feel you're you're pretty there there set is on using yeah one. there's one where i mean i do and and it would be more of a you know a tire sleeve covering the rifle and and mark i know you've hunted in alaska a good bit too and this is any time i'm in a in a small boat and inflatable something like that running around in salt water you're getting a lot of spray on the rifles and i'm telling you that's the one time i'm trying to cover my rifle as best i can yeah you know usually a full sleeve just because the salt water is i mean you you can go a day and you can see all the rust starting in places on the rifle so you know that is the one time i'm pretty religious about trying to use a cover if i can for sure yeah. well and I'll say this, the reason why my solo hunter rifle cover is uh, sans the discussion here today, at least physically, is because I'm just coming back from Alaska. And <laughs> so it's with all my stuff that it's still kind of the, like the uh, virtual gear bomb that uh, is yeah. uh, one of my rooms downstairs right now. So that's, uh, that's there. But so the first time, so I haven't historically used a rifle cover, you know, really ever in my life. And my buddies and I, my buddy Joey Pyburn, uh, and, and some other buddies uh, were hunting black bears, fall black bears, up in the Alpine. And both of them had a rifle cover. like It was like that, that style of rifle cover. I didn't. It was August. I'm like, eh, what do I need this thing for? It's bluebird weather. Like, it's going to be great, right? We set up our tents. I just left my rifle out overnight. Oh, yeah. It froze. <laughs> frost on everything. My water in, in yeah. my Nalgene's froze. And I look at my <laughs> rifle in the morning, and it's just like coated in a layer of frost. The, the rifle itself, the scope, everything. So now I'm like, you know, trying to, you know, like, oh, it should sure be nice to th- see through my rifle scope if I'd like to shoot. And so that was where I was like, you know what? I should probably look at getting one of these things. And um, so that's the style that I've used predominantly. It's more of like a almost like an elastic sleeve. It goes over the complete rifle, uh, open at the bottom, and it's a simple, almost like tension. You pull it off, you slide it off, and you're Wait, ready so to go. Wait, so it's basically what we sell for the neoprene rifle scope covers, but it's for your whole gun, pretty much. <laughs> kind of different Somewhere? materials. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. 
and yeah. uh, I'll see. We'll see if uh, MC Ryan can like you know get it's us awesome a picture, picture. so mm-hmm. it can uh, join so the party here. Let me visually, ask you. I mean, I've I've used that same case mark, and you know my like when I used it, I felt that the fact that it allowed moisture to come in underneath it, and depend you know depending like if you had the rifle leaning or in a boat or whatever it was, it seemed to me it got still got pretty wet inside. Did you feel that it was covering you so good on the? In the situations that I've used it it's worked well and it's had enough airflow that um like yes it can like you know maybe absorb a little moisture or or trap moisture but it also doesn't um i guess it leaves enough room in the scenarios that i've been in that it almost like is better than some other solutions that really want to if it gets wet in there it's going to hold it in against the lenses of the optic or something like that but I haven't, I guess what I can't say that I've done is like pulled the rifle out in the midst of like just a torrential downpour yeah, and, and yeah. seen what, what the lenses look like. So I guess I can't speak to that. But the one thing I can say is I like it for, uh, number one, just kind of like, you know, general storage, perhaps if you're outside and also on, you know, a backpack style hunt, the way that I have been securing my rifle as of late is um, just using the side straps of uh, a stone glacier pack, and I actually put the butt of the rifle in the pocket that's here. And yeah. then the I cup use, holder? Uh, yeah. Water bottle holder. Yeah, <laughs> it's now a rifle holder. And then I use the straps and kind of like secure it to the side. And I like yeah. that because my rifle stays protected, right? If I need to dump my pack, even if I kind of like, you know, it kind of rolls over on the rifle a little bit, you know, I'm not getting a potential, you know, barrel obstruction. I'm not dunking up the scope if it, you know, lands in a little bit of moss or some dirt, stuff like that. I'm keeping the action clean. And then also, you know, when you're in that mode, you could be like going through a bunch of brush and stuff like that. So you're just like protecting your rifle from, you know, just getting junk and it leaves sticks, needles, whatever. Hmm. And it's not like a, a huge weight penalty. So that's, that's what I've been doing with that. Um, Let me you ask- know, if you don't bring tape for your muzzle covers your muzzle yeah that's a huge yeah. part of it i mean the fact that you do you can see it on this one here i mean you, mm-hmm. you do have that muzzle protection so even if you if you happen to forget to tape that muzzle over that's i mean that's that's huge keeping stuff out of the muzzle so that's a that's definitely a concrete advantage of it there yeah let me ask this one though mark uh these guys who have their names on any of these products and whatnot they can hunt circles around me but i i am curious uh why not just run flip caps and tape your muzzle I feel like that's the simpler solution and potentially more expedient when, like, I see these and I wouldn't want to take them on a stock if I'm really trying to get up close and tight. Mm-hmm. Personally, I mean, like, I'm trying to play it out in my mind's eye. I haven't actually done it uh, with this setup. But it seems like when you've got clips and you've got a thing to remove, that's more motion, more potential for noise. Uh, whereas I'm not saying that, you know, flip caps are entirely silent if you go like, you know, like that every right. time, but that'll cover your lenses. It'll keep them from frosting over if you've got them shut in the mm-hmm. middle of the night or something like that. Flip those bad boys up and you don't have to worry about the tape on your muzzle. We already had a podcast about that a long time ago. And in my mind, you'd be good, right? It's kind of the minimalist approach there yeah. for sure. Yeah. The one thing I will say, thinking about what Mark's talking about too. The one situation I could see maybe if you're out and you're hunting in, in maybe borderline freezing, sleet, rain, snow, you know, you can protect the muzzle and the scope, like you said, but the one thing would be the action of the rifle. And, and I've had that happen where you get freezing snow and rain in there and eventually it begins to freeze up in mm. there. So having, you know, having something like that, maybe to keep that part of it out of the action, I mm-hmm. can see there are times that would be a definite benefit to yeah, you know, and I don't see these as like, uh, like okay, for instance, when we were just up in Alaska, right? Like I had for, I'd say 90% of the hunt, it was in that cover strapped to my backpack, right? Um, for the, you know, 10%, probably less than 10% when we're making, trying to make some final moves on deer, it's like, okay, cool, you know, we're making our final push on these things, pull the rifle off you know, get the cover off. And again, so that's right. when double up, still have tape on my muzzle, right? So I would say still yeah. tape your muzzle. I'm still always a proponent of that. And then, um, you know, put put the cover away in your pocket, whatever. 
and then you know make that final push with the rifle in your hands at the ready ready to go um something like that um but that the solo hunter one is like i'd say like it's almost like the minimalist approach of rifle covers, and sometimes right. simple is better too. Right. Like I, yeah, that one's fairly thin, right? It's just it's just a material. There's mm-hmm. no real padding on it, so you're just getting protection, right. good quality material. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because these ones here on the table, they have padding, so you are also protecting your optic from impact if you dropped it. You know, and obviously we're we're vortex here, and people are going to be like, "Well, my scope, you know, I can drop it off a cliff and it's still fine." Whatever, uh, <laughs> like. The fact of the matter is, if you're on a hunt and you're right back in the middle of nowhere, uh, you may yeah. encounter that scope a comes over, lands on a rock. It's not good. It doesn't not matter good. what scope yeah. it is. Um, so they do offer some of that protection, but it's at the cost of. I mean, this thing, the air armor one. Mm-hmm. I bet you it could take a pretty severe blow and still be fine here, but it's at the expense of size and bulk. It's not particularly heavy when you actually look at the size of it, but mm-hmm. it's just it's bulky. Yeah, it's, you know, you got some space, a little extra going on there. Um, it's kind of just a scope cover, though, really, right? I mean, this one is very... comes down over probably where the action the, would be I guess, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I guess it would. It'd cover your bolt and that, yeah. So I would say at first glance, yes. And when, you know, Greg was like, you know, he's like, oh, I'm a p- proponent of this thing. I'm like, I don't know, Greg. Like, you know, like, it seems like a little extra, you know? And again, like, I don't like uh, something taking up a lot of space. What he liked about it, though, and I was like, Okay, I, I can buy what you're selling here. Um, is uh, he's like this is a multi a multi purpose piece of gear for him. So he'll use this as yes, it's his scope cover, Wait a right? Minute. I'm seeing is pillow it a right seat? now. So yeah, and so and he does some pretty extreme stuff. Like he's like he's you know tough guy. going in yeah. and out of airplanes. Yeah. They're yeah. in some gnarly country. I mean, you talk about you know potential stuff where your rifle might take a big spill. Hopefully not you along with it. It's the you know the goat and cheap country that oh, yeah. that he's in, right? There's a good pillow right there. Oh yeah. So you nailed it, Paul. So he he's like, yep, this could be my this can be my seat at times. It's my uh, rifle scope cover at times. It's his pillow at times. If you get a flat in your air mattress, he's like, you can kind of at least put part of your body underneath it underneath it and insulate yourself from the ground. You know, a few extra pockets here. Because, yeah, once you undo those clips and it folds flat, it looks just like a pillow. In fact, I think somebody basically just took, like, a camp pillow and put <laughs> straps on it and thought, I'm... Multi-purpose the they camp They probably pillow. put straps yeah. on it originally to, like, fold the camp pillow so it was more compact. And then they were like, oh, I'll just store it around my rifle skull. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, ah, that's pretty interesting. And it is tough enough. Yeah, you could totally sit on this on some yeah. craggy stuff and it would be just fine. You know, so um, you have a couple extra pockets here. You know, like maybe you're like, you know what? I know I always have a few extra shells with me or perhaps, you know, lens cloth, other things that you might need at the ready when you're getting ready to shoot. So um, definitely a cool system. Another thing with, you know, I'd say, and we'll get to the, the Stealthy Hunter one here, that I think both these offer, and again, like, this is in a little bit more in theory than practice, because I haven't had a chance to use either of these in the field, just kind of talking with Greg and, and Ryan, those guys. You kind of have a rear bag at the ready here, too. You know what I mean? Like Could be. You, you pull one of these things out, you know, you can shove it underneath your arm in a pinch, things like that. So, um yeah. It's kind of one of those Actually, things like while you're, you're getting ready to shoot, it can be part nice. of your shot process too. All right. You're selling me, Mark. It's looking better and better as oh. this goes on. <laughs> 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 you could not You could make a decent rear bag out of that for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, already right there. Right. Too. You just pull it right that's off le- your gun. That's legit. So the, the Air Armor one and the Stealthy Hunter one, they both have, you know, a carry handle on top, um, which I could see that being even just convenient for – general like getting in and out of the truck and things like that um you know if you were kind of like wanting to carry the rifle you know lower and you know just have have a hold point there um you know when you're trying to make a move on something you could certainly do that too before you're getting ready to shoot so um yeah i don't know man like i classic me jim can't decide can't decide i like all of them I like kind of I like all of them <laughs> yeah, for different yeah. reasons. Like I really like the weight and space of the Solo Hunter one. I like that it's simple. Like it, it gives me the coverage that I need. You know, it's it's a full coverage option. Um, but you're losing some of the a little bit more some of the multi-purpose that you have with you know these things that also have a little more stuff to them at the same time. Yeah. So, um, 
yeah, lastly, we got the the Stealthy Hunter one, which is kind of like a hybrid a little bit of the two. Just when you thought you wanted the best of both worlds, there's also pros and cons to this one, though, at the same time. Right, right. So this one um, is modular in some ways. So in some ways, it's got some um, parallels with the air armor. You've got the handle on top here. You've got a little bit more padding around the scope. Not quite as much, but you do have more padding than probably the Solo Hunter one. Mm-hmm. And then you've got, you know, the the barrel crown cover here, which is, again, you know, you're saving some weight here because you don't have the fabric and it just, you know, elastic over the top. So, you know, pretty quick option there. Um, what I have on here that you don't necessarily, like, I, for simplicity's sake, I left these on, but these clips, so I've got a clip here, clip here, another clip down here. Um, you don't have to have these on. So you don't have to worry like, oh, you know, if I want to use this right here, so you got like kind of like a, a buttstock holder here, um, you would need these on if you wanted to use this piece, but if you didn't want to use this piece, then you would just have them off. So you don't have to worry like, oh, those are always on there and I don't like, you know, doing that. But like those don't have to be there. So um, a little bit of a best of both worlds with this one. So Mark, does this, does the buttstock holder, will that attach to a, pack so this would like support weight is that it seems almost just like you're attaching a storage solution just uh if that attached to a pack belt then you could you know that would support the weight of the right. rifle vertically i'm not sure if they intended that or not tbd maybe, maybe. i need maybe. Mark's some research maybe. for all these maybe, buckles yeah. yeah if you could attach that to your pack then you've got a way to just then it's kind of becomes almost like a pseudo like the, a giant rifle holster right, right. all right I'm gonna figure now. Maybe. I got now. I got maybe. To, maybe that's something that I don't even know about. Paul could be talk to Lampers. I should. He's out hunting right now. I can't. True. True. Um, I don't know. Something that I find definitely useful. Something that I've only really been using as of late. And I and I'd say something that at least for myself, I picture more useful on. Well, I shouldn't say that. Like, even if you're just hucking your gun in and out of the pickup, like, it's nice to have a little bit of cup. Like, I I was going to say, like, oh, more on, a, like, a backpack-style hunt, but really, they're all... Now, and I'm yeah. also, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a lawyer or anything, and I don't know the rules in every state, but I know in some states, you know, you have to have a gun in a case, or you know, if, if it's not in a case, mm-hmm. then you gotta, maybe it's, like, a concealed carry holder or something like that for that state. I, mm-hmm. There's all kinds of stuff I've, I've heard to the grapevine, and i got to do more digging into myself, but... Um, I don't know if something like this would suffice, you know, you like if you chucked it in the truck, does that count or does it have to be in a fully enclosed case? I or? think generally the verbiage is fully enclosed. I'm guessing. I much. figured that would but be not, the case. It might but not be there. It might not be that everywhere though. Yeah. It's worth, it's worth looking into it's, that. Yeah. I would say check your local regulations, see what, you know, see what will right, suffice. Right. I know like Wisconsin used to be heavy into ha- having your gun, yeah. have your gun case. Now you don't. Right. You know, they also, I always, is that how that works? Cause I got my, when I got my concealed carry, I was kind of like not really worried about it anymore. Right. Uh, cause I remember that there was almost like something involved with that, but anyway. Yeah. So now was, even, even if you don't have concealed carry, you don't have to have a, a uh, long gun okay, cased in the, right. in the vehicle. Where you yeah. used to have to. So maybe other states where you used to have to, maybe you don't anymore. I don't know. You know, yeah, but check your state's regs. Though. Check, yeah, yeah. Everyone's different. I'm sure. The one that always used to get me was to having to have your bow cased. I'm like, come on guys. Like <laughs> let's get, let's get <laughs> a little bit a real little here. Ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. um, Anywho, anywho, uh, I don't know anything else. So, do we have you convinced, Paul? Or are you thinking about it? I think you know. I, I actually, you know, I uh, Greg's points on this thing make a lot of sense. And and when you have someone like Greg, who's a pretty hardcore mountain hunter, sheep hunter, a guy mm-hmm. who's very used to you know evaluating every piece of gear he's taken, if he's if he's using a piece of gear like this, it may it, you know it, it it makes me take a second look at it. Normally, I might look at this and kind of discount it. But the you know the points you brought up about the versatility. Now I look at it a little bit differently. It uh, you know I do carry a rear support of some type with me. I do carry some sort of a pillow. I do carry a sit pad. So I mean that kind of covers a lot of stuff. Now I'll have to go home and I'll have to put that all on the scale, kind of weigh it out. Also, see yeah, how it, see how it fits in your pack how it too. Fits, yeah. Well, and the tricky thing too is like in practice, right? So like thinking about this, it's like yeah, it doubles as a sit pad, right? But now, do I want to uncover my rifle every time I want to sit down, or do I want to take my little Z seat and 
you know. You know what though the you know the like the air padding where I've seen in particular I'm sure it's it's part of what Greg's vision of that is too. You know when you're when you're up in that high alpine hunting a lot of times you're side hilling on rocky slopes and I've seen many many times where guys have slipped carrying the rifle in their hand and they've got it on the uphill side and down they go and bang the rifle hits the rocks the scope hits the rocks. But that's you know that's sort of when you're moving when you're when you're covering mm-hmm. ground. Now when you when you're going to sit down, you know, then you're probably not so much worried. You, you put the rifle down so it's not going to flop over. Yeah. And you can undo your seat and get comfy. So, you know, and then yeah, and then like you know this one here, you, you kind of have like it's almost like a tweener. You still get that you know that rear bag if you want to fold that up, you know, tuck it underneath. Um, and then, you know, like I said, if you clip this on, you got a little bit of an ammo holder. So it's similar to this one where you get, you know, some some pocket functionality where you're like, hey, I always know when I grab this kit, if I just grab this, I know I've got some bullets with me, mm-hmm. you know. So, right. um, I don't know, like I said, I like them all. I like all three. You can't decide? No, I can't. <laughs> Would it be any different if some of your favorite TV hunting personalities weren't associated with any of these, Mark? I will say this. I really like all those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> but I like them. I respect them as hunters. Well, of course. And, uh, you know, they've all obviously found, you know, a need for this. So, like, all, it makes me yeah, take a yeah, you know, second look. All guys with a lot of experience, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it comes from what they do, so. Yeah, I like it. I don't know. Folks out there, have you been using a rifle cover? Which one do you like? What do you like about it? And uh, has, has it been one of these? I don't know. Let us know. Let us know. Absolutely. Always looking for more info. Yeah. Stay uh, Stay strapped. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say protected. Stay, oh. pa- stay padded, yeah. Stay padded. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>